Piedmont Rhapsody, composed by David Crow, and it ties directly into our eighth grade social studies curriculum. They study the history of North Carolina, including the textile mills, and they all take a field trip to the Levine Museum, and they get that whole experience. So the project is based on the history and being inspired to create art and music and movement um, and even dramatic monologues through the inspiration of the history. I think what we wanted to get our students to understand was how the arts, all of the arts, work to, working together can reveal a lot of culture, cultural history, for using the, um, the theme of Mill Village and the textile industry for looking at what life was like, what life has become, and using the arts, music, dance, theater, visual arts, to express that on their own level as they, as they perceive things. And it was wonderful to, to watch that unfold. We had, we had band, full band, for about 50 kids, or an orchestra of about 17 string players, um, the chorus of about 30, then there was drama class, and I guess there were about 30 kids in that, in that class, and then an art class of maybe another 25, 30 students. The art class worked on photography, video, animation. The most valuable part for the kids is making a connection between the past and the present. I learned that meal life was not easy and that we do have it easy compared to them and that we shouldn't take things for granted, that we get to see our family thing every day and we don't have to go to work like children did because children didn't get to go to school. Right. And we complain about going to school but it's actually a lot easier than it was. Within each group we, we worked on different themes drawn from the mill culture, things like community, the hard work, the, the, the daily life, conditions of daily life, what it must have been like then. And they developed some real musical melodies, motives and ideas, things that, that made their way into the final piece. Like we learned the types of rhythms, how they worked well with their machinery. Like we had to learn the rhythms, how certain rhythms worked with certain types of things. And so we did tie in like music writing. Then we do some experimental things with um, composition. How do you explore the sounds that your instruments make? We do very simple activities where the kids just explore the sounds they can make with various objects. Then we go into um, emotion, tying a theme from the mill life, and how can you express that through a sound on your instrument. From there, we take the kids' ideas and allow them to take control of where the project goes. The most interesting part is seeing the things that they come up with when you tell them that there are no limits. In this particular school, the, much of the population lives in various stages of poverty, levels of poverty, 
and are not able to um, participate in some of the life experiences that other kids are able to participate in. You know, where some families would visit a museum six or seven times over their, over their childhood, a lot of these kids never get to even leave their neighborhood. And this allows them to bring a little bit of the past into their lives. And uh, we could have st stood up and given them a whole lecture on the history of the mill villages and the textile industry in, in the Piedmont region of the Carolinas, and we would have had 9,000 sleepy eighth graders. But by giving them this starting point of, of, of an artwork, we got some wonderful discussions about life in the mill village. And kids really did some research and they asked really probing questions and it showed up in the artwork that they created, that they really did understand the ideas of what it was like to live in, in, a, in a mill village, the idea of community, of hard work, of labor, of repetition and boredom and stress. All of these, all of these things came up and they really understood a lot about what folks had to go through in those days. And I...